Not all murderers have had a metal spike fly through their heads the way Phineas Gage did. So where did the damage to their prefrontal cortex come from? The answer is stress. Stress wears away our brains, causing potholes to form on our long roads. This makes the long road impassable and makes the short road an easier and easier route for information to pass to the amygdala. And, as a result, fuses get shorter and tempers get quicker. So it's no surprise that the most violent places are those where people live under the highest amounts of stress. The relationship between stress and violence is almost certainly true for Jamaica, where a half of all deaths are caused by stress-related problems, such as heart disease and stroke. Of course, most of us keep our cool when we're under pressure. So why then do a few of us flip out and become violent? The answer to that question can be found here. As we develop inside our mothers, our brains are developing as well. The short road that links the outside world to the amygdala is made relatively early. But the long road that we use to control our tempers is made much more slowly. The prefrontal cortex may start being made while we're inside our mothers, but it never fully forms until we're in our early 20s. In fact, we're most violent when we're two years old. The only reason these little ones aren't killing each other is because they don't have access to guns and knives that we as adults do. So we don't actually learn how to become more violent as we grow up, but instead we learn to control ourselves as we get older and as our long roads are built. Just how well we build our long roads depends on what happens to us as children. So what happens to us early in life often determines how violent we'll become when we're older. This makes sense. If we live in an area where people are violent towards us, then our brains prepare us by making us violent ourselves.